we're honored to have Dr. Biongo Zoe with us. I met him through Dr. Leonard Sweet. And this goes back about seven years ago. And, and we have built a tremendous relationship. Um, he pastors in Seoul, Korea, one of the great churches in Seoul, Korea. Um, he has, as I mentioned earlier today, read the Bible through more than 1,000 times. So he probably understands what's coming next. Um, he is the founder of what's called the Tong Dot Bible. And, and I've asked him to talk about the temple and uh, investing in the temple. And I've asked him to talk about it in the context of God's word into our life. He, uh, he's an incredible thinker an incredible leader, not just in Seoul, Korea, but way, way, way beyond that. He has been uh, one of the keynote speakers at the Synergize Conference. He was in Orlando, Florida, his keynote speaker at the Wittenberg 2017 Congress in um, Wittenberg, Germany, uh, five years ago. The Lord willing, next October, we're launching the Seoul Hub uh, in partnership with Dr. Biongo Zo, and we are privileged and blessed uh, to have him this afternoon. Would you please help me welcome him as he comes? Amen. You. Love you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Davis, my friend, James. Uh, and uh, my friend, Dr. David Sobere Pina. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is with us right here and now. We are gathered here today to finish the greatest task that Jesus gave to us to go and make disciples of all peoples. To do this, we must invest talent and temper. We need to invest our time and efforts to complete the Great Commission. The first step is to understand who God is and what he wants us to do by investing time to really know his words, the Bible, and one story, his story. Let me begin with what I call Tong Dok. Tong Dok is a method used to read the through the whole Bible in chronological order and with the heart of God. It is a method that can help Christians understand the heart of God by reading his word as a whole. In the Korean language, Tongdok means a whole or a season. And we will apply this to understand the goodness of God's kingdom. These are what I call Jesus' status. Jesus' contributions and Jesus' teachings through Tongdong. Every day, our lives are flooded with news, meaning a new events or a new information. Among these, there are some that needed to be delivered urgently called news flash. News is generally divided into good news and bad news. Sadly, most news that we here on a day-to-day -day basis are bad news. Even worse, we are so busy catching up with the news about the people that we do not have time to listen, read, and ponder on the really good news, God's good news, the gospel. The age of a smartphone means everyone from little children to adults spend all their time keeping up with the people news. We keep them our smartphones by our bedside stand. We take them to the bathroom. Some Christians even keep them in their hands during service. God's news from Genesis to Revelation is always whenever, wherever, 
in its entirety good news. The Bible continues to give us good news of God's kingdom every day. Today's news flash will be out of date tomorrow, but the Bible gives us good news yesterday, today, tomorrow. This is because the word is news from God's kingdom. We must always bear in mind that news from God's kingdom is and will be always be the best news for our generation and future generations until the end of time. Amen. Then, how should we teach the goodness of God's kingdom to our children? The goodness is the best news is to know Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Through the word, we must know Jesus by understanding Jesus' status. What he did for us by understanding Jesus' contributions and what we needed to learn from him by understanding Jesus' teachings. Firstly, the good news of God's kingdom is to know Jesus' status. Jesus is the Son of God. Knowing the status of humans who are created in God's likeness is not of critical importance. Whether someone is the son of a king or a pauper does not matter. Only that he is God's creation. Buddha, Confucius, and Socrates are all just creations, unlike Jesus, who is the Son of God. Whether a mastermind, genius, or every human being, people are born and they died, and they have no power to save the world. But in God's kingdom, Jesus' status is of critical importance. This is because the most deterministic factor is whether Jesus is or is not the Son of God. If Jesus is the Son of God, then he becomes our Savior. And if he is not, then he is just like the last of us. But in the Bible, where God revealed himself, he recorded Jesus as his son. This means that Jesus, as the Son of God, is indeed our Savior. The Bible clearly teaches us that Jesus' status is God's only begotten son. Yeah, yeah no problem. Nah. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is the image of the individual God. Thank you. All and that all things were created through him and for him. Prior to his three-year public life, Jesus fasted for 40 days. And when he was finished, Satan asked whether Jesus was truly the Son of God. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Three years after Satan asked about Jesus' status, the high priest in the Jerusalem temple questioned him. They also wanted to know whether Jesus was or was not the Son of God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Before this, Jesus asked his disciple Peter whether he knew who he was. Peter answered you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied that God was the one who made this known to Peter. Jesus' disciples who became apostles and the seven men filled with the Holy Spirit boldly claimed that Jesus was the Son of God. At first, Paul did not understand this, but after his meeting with Jesus on his way to Damascus, he proclaimed that Jesus' status was the Son of God. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. The most important thing Christians need to know and believe is that Jesus' status is the Son of God. But when Christ came as a priest of the good things that are now already here. Look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The most wonderful news is that whoever knows and believes that Jesus is the Son of God, then God will live in them and we will live in God. Secondly, the good news of God's kingdom is to know Jesus' is a contribution. Jesus made atonement for our sins. Because Jesus' status is the Son of God, we were given salvation through his atonement of our sins. Jesus, the Son of God, came down as the Lamb of God and the High Priest to become a living offering on the cross. He sacrificed himself to wash our sins away. Even if thousands of people nailed themselves to the cross, no single human can receive forgiveness. Only through Jesus being nailed to the cross were we forgiven and given salvation. Humans who are all sinners cannot be saved for any other reason but through Jesus' contributions. Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all people as recorded in the Bible at the proper time. Because of this, a Christian's foremost duty is to make Jesus' contributions worthwhile for others. The cross is God's power for those who have been saved by Jesus' crucifixion. For the message of the cross is foolish, foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Because Jesus knew Jesus, because Paul knew Jesus' contribution better than anyone, he claimed that his only job was to know and to teach the cross as the way to God's kingdom. Only Jesus' contribution on the cross can make peace between the earth and the heavens. It is impossible for humans to be in peace with God without Jesus' contributions. Only through Jesus' contribution on the cross can all things on earth and the heavens be reconciled. Thirdly, the good news of God's kingdom is to know Jesus' teachings. Jesus taught us that God is love. Good news of God's kingdom is to know and believe in Jesus' status as the Son of God and to follow in his teachings. Amazingly, Jesus taught us that God is love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son to save us. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus' teaching is that we should love God as he loves us, and to love our neighbors who are made in the image of God. This is because God is love. Buddha taught the following. The way is not in the sky, the way is in the heart. Confucius taught the following. Without an acquaintance with the rulers of propriety, it is impossible for the character to be established. Socrates taught the following. True knowledge exists in knowing that you know nothing. While these teachings resonated with millions of people worldwide, they were all limited to teachings about humans and human life. However, Jesus taught us about the beyond humans. He taught us that God is love. Understanding Jesus' status, contributions, and the teachings is very important in order to know the difference between Christianity and all other religions in the world. The whole Bible is 
the records of Jesus. And Jesus himself tells us that in order to do God's work, we must first believe in the one he has sent. I believe that teaching our children about the old Bible in all the nations, in every household from the age of five, will contribute to doing God's work on earth. This is what I teach my own children. And I believe every pastor and layman should teach their children. Whenever I see children, I make an effort to smile and to befriend them. This is because we need to get these children to know the Bible from a young age. It is easier to help children to read the Bible than adults. Believe me. I've tried. To do this smartly and effectively, I encourage you to download the Tongdok Bible app. The Tongdok Bible app was launched in early 2022 for three purposes. First, to demonstrate that the whole Bible is one story. Second, to break down daily reading portions into 365 days for annual reading. This means that we can read the whole Bible at least once every year. And third, to provide five observation story points for daily readings. Understanding the whole Bible as one story and our life story can help us to know better who God is and to do his work. Let's watch a short video clip that introduces the Tongdok Bible app. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tongdok app. The Tongdok app is not like any other app in the world today, as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biongo Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tom Doc app. This Tom Doc app is amazing. When I first met Dr. Zoe, we were speaking together at a conference, and when I saw the Tom Bible and the way he had placed this one story together, the Bible, one story, I ordered cases of this Bible. Now to see this app, the Tom Doc app, ready for you to use in your daily Bibles reading. This is amazing because so many people tell me I don't understand the Bible. And he has placed it in an order so that it is one story. And then day after day, takes you through the Bible in a way that God's Word will touch your heart so deeply that it changes your beliefs. It helps you to rise up and be the amazing person He created you to be. Welcome to the Tom Talk app. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tom Dog Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zoe does, the way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do that. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Dot Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story of Genesis to Revelation is the daily mouth to mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly 
who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life. 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth to mouth, breathing in the spirit on you as you use this app. Okay, let me give you an example of what I mean by knowing the whole Bible story. The 66 books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is one story. Today, I want to give you what I realized from reading the whole Bible through more than 1,000 times over 40 years in the next 10 minutes. Let me present it to you the whole Bible story in 10 minutes, of which I pray that every Christian, and particularly every Sunday school child, will be able to memorize by heart and out loud. Before doing this, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wonderful gift to us, the Bible. We pray that we can make you, our creator, happy beyond all measures, like Stephen did in Acts chapter 7. We pray that we will be able to tell the whole Bible story without getting long, without turning from it to the right or to the left, without crossing the line in front of a crowd, and within 10 minutes, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, stay with me. A free history from the native country of the universe, the heart of God, is the start of the Genesis story of God's creation, Adam's and Eve's fall, Noah's flood, and the dramatic divine self-identification and your multi-generational God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. God called Abraham God's friend and tested his obedience in a one to offering on Mount Moriah. Isaac lived 100 times during famine. Jacob established the foundation for 12 tribes through his sons. Joseph entered Egypt to birth a nation. 400 years later, the Hebrew people leave Egypt after the first Passover. The outward reason for Exodus was Egypt's persecution and enslavement. The real reason for Exodus was to form a covenant between God and the Israelites to establish a kingdom of priests a dream for all nations. Leviticus is a textbook for holy students in a kingdom of priests, including how to prepare the five types of offerings. Numbers is the story of the Mana generation who were educated over 40 years in the desert by Moses. Deuteronomy is the story of the Mana generation's graduation in the desert. Joshua is the story of the founding of a kingdom of priests in Canaan with the 48 towns for the Levites at its center. Judges is the story of the 350 years under the judges' rule when the first step and second step punishments of famine and plunder as recorded in Leviticus came upon Israel. Lot is the success story of education in a kingdom of priests in the midst of the judges. Samuel puts an end to the dark period of judges through the birth of a Mitzvah generation. That ignites the frames of a kingdom of priests. 
Saul becomes the first king of Israel. And the clash between Saul and Samuel was the first of many feuds between a prophet and a king. A shepherd, magician, and giant slayer named David is anointed with the holy oil three times to become king. And he shows true loyalty to a kingdom of priests by preparing for the construction of the Jerusalem temple, for which he is given the title, God's servant. Prayers and psalms by David are recorded that opened the gateway to heaven. As well as the story of Job, of whom God posted for his unyielding faith. Solomon completes the construction of the temple and the righteous Proverbs, Song of Songs, and Ecclesiastes. After Solomon's death, Israel's north and south kingdoms are forced to divide for 200 years. During that time, Elijah, Elisha, Amos, and Hosea cry out for the people to return to God, while Jonah showcases God's heart towards all nations through the three-day miracle. North Israel is destroyed by Assyria's army in 8th century BC, despite many prophets who were sent to persuade Israel to return to God. At the same time, prophets Isaiah and Micah are sent by God to South Judah to prophesy about the Messiah and his birth in Bethlehem. 150 years later, when South Judah is destroyed by Babylon's army, prophets Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Nahum, and Joel are appointed to comprehensively evaluate the 500 years of Israel's monarchy. During this time, Jeremiah prophesies the third step punishment of a kingdom of priests upon Israel to unfold in Babylon for 70 years and recorded in Leviticus. Punishment, education, Sabbath, life span of empire, as well as prophesying a new covenant written on the heart, not on tablets of stone. To the return the captives from Babylon, God gives this one and two chronicles as motivation to rebuild Jerusalem. During the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, the people are reborn during the, the word of God with the help of Ezekiel. Daniel's four visions sketch out the change of imperial rule from Babylon, Persia, Hellas to Rome, and it compares this upheaval to the kingdom of God, they will stand forever. The Babylonian Empire falls to Persia, just as God promised. And the Persian Empire invests in the Levant region by facilitating the reconstruction of the Jerusalem Temple through Jerubabel, Haggai, and Zechariah, along with the returned captives. Meanwhile, the Jews who remain in Persia are threatened with death due to Haman the Amalekites' wicked scheme, but managed to overcome this disaster through Queen Esther's political survey. Ezra then leads the second return of captives to Jerusalem and sets the foundation for the Sanhedrin assembly. Nehemiah leads the third return of captives to reconstruct the Jerusalem walls. 1,000 years after the founding of a kingdom of priests, God makes known his love towards Israel through Malachi and promises to send Elijah to turn the heart of the parents to their children and the heart of the children to their parents. God is then silent for 400 years. In between BC and AD, Jesus Christ is born in Bethlehem to supreme delight of angels and shepherds. Jesus teaches God's unending love during his three years on earth and values one soul more precious than the whole universe. At times, 
they just become they could just stay from showing God's love to the people day and night. Jesus is a pillar to the weak, an advocate for the poor, a healer to the sick and wounded, and their friend to Samaritans, tax collectors, and sinners. During Jesus' last week, Jesus turns his last Passover meal into holy communion in fulfillment of the new covenant. After standing trial before the Sanhedrin assembly and Pontius Pilate, Jesus is sentenced to be crucified on the Roman Empire's legendary torture and turns it into a door to heaven itself. The moment Jesus Christ it is finished on the cross, the curtain of the Jerusalem temple lifted in two. In fulfilling the laws and the prophets, Jesus reigns victorious on the cross once for all by his own blood and becomes the new and living way through the veil as he embraces the good news of God's kingdom. Wow! Three days after Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus resurrected from his grave and gave us his great commission. Go and make disciples of all peoples. The Pentecost experience of the Holy Spirit paves the way for the disciple era and the establishment of the Jerusalem Council to spread the good news of God's kingdom and strengthen the church despite threats from the Sanhedrin Assembly. On his sixth post resurrection appearance, Jesus appears to Paul on his way to Damascus. And Paul is called to become an apostle for all nations. Paul accompanies Barnabas, who is sent by the Jerusalem church on their first missionary journey to Asia Minor. Two years later, the Jerusalem council met to discuss the issue of circumcision raised by the Antioch church. The council rules that the only way to salvation is through the cross of Christ. Also, Paul is acclaimed as a loving brother to the standard of Barnabas during this meeting. Paul's team embarks on their second and third missionary journeys and they send letters to churches in Thessalonica, Galatia, Corinth, and Rome, which are meant for public hearings, not private meetings. Towards the end of their third missionary journey, Paul's team decides to spread the word by traveling across Rome to Spain, a place considered to be the end of the world in those days. When they inform the Jerusalem church of this plan, the Jerusalem church advises Paul first to visit the Jerusalem temple. But Paul is cornered by his own people who want to carry him. A Roman commander rescues Paul and strategizes to hold another Sanhedrin trial to help Paul attempt at a final persuasion. When the Sanhedrin assembly's threats reach dangerous height, Paul ostensibly and avowedly confesses his belief in resurrection, which splits the Sadducees and the Pharisees and makes his escape. That night, Paul is sent to Caesarea under the protection of the Roman commander and is held under trial by Governor Felix, which keeps Paul captive for a further two years. Paul is subsequently held under trial by the new governor Festus and ends up using his Roman citizenship when threats by the Sanhedrin assembly become unbearable to be sent to Rome as a prisoner on deck to be tried by the Roman Emperor. While waiting for the Emperor's trial for two years under house arrest in Rome, Paul preached the good news of God's kingdom and the rights Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and Pilate. When Paul is released for a short while, he embarks on yet another missionary journey. In AD 64, a great fire sweeps over Rome. About 200 Christian leaders and the first generation evangelists are accused of starting the fire and are brutally massacred. 
Paul also realized that his time is near. And the right is the final letter of the last will and testament to Timothy. At the same time, first generation evangelist write to second generation evangelist Hebrews, Warren, Peter, and Jude before their untimely deaths. The letters are written for an second generation faithful to fight the righteous fight under the Roman Empire's persecution of Christians and to preach the gospel to the enemies of the earth in face of martyrdom. St. John outlives all the other first generation evangelists for a further 30 years and looks after second generation evangelists who face deadly persecution by the Roman Empire. St. John records 1, 2, and 3 John and proclaims that God is love. St. John also introduces the Lamb of God and the new heavens and the new earth to the seven churches in Asia Minor and closes with the story of the Jesus' rapturous return in Revelation. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible has one story, it's all enough in our lives. We will multiply our faith and churches through the Tongdok Revival Movement in the 21st century through God's word, the Bible. God's story is the story of life and our life story. Amen. Praise God. Can you express appreciation to Dr. Zhou? Uh, Amen. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry, Pastor wow. David. Oh, yeah. Uh, I tell you, I'm, let me hold it and you do the presentation, Dr. Oh, you can. You, should. you are the main man to present this. <laughs> you are, you are, you're the main man. man. Wow. This for you, yes. Dr. Zhou, we, we want to present this to you uh, from Dr. David Soprepena and myself mm -hmm. on the Finnish Asia Summit, November 18, number 8, 9, and 10, 2022, plaque appreciation presented to Biongo Zhou for his inspiring and anointed ministry that greatly challenged everyone to be part of fulfilling the Great Commission by 2030 to 2000, your birthday of the church. Given this day of November 2022, during the finish of the summit, Word of Hope, Christian Family Church, and the address, of course, from James Davis and Dr. David Silberpena. Oh, we love you, my friend. I Thank you very much. Let me, let me show everybody else what yeah, it looks like. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. He's the man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. It's my, it's my privilege tonight to introduce Dr. Ronnie Floyd. I first began to follow the ministry of Ronnie Floyd back in the 1990s. And while he was pastoring in, in what we call the state of Arkansas, in the heart of the United States of America. And then over time, he relocated uh, the, the church and built a state-of-the-art uh, church in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which is way up north in the state of Arkansas. And I remember he, he and I even talking one day about the renaming of the, of the church that he chose. And what a wonderful pastor and preacher he's been throughout the decades, an author and writer, served twice as the president of the Southern Baptist Convention uh, in the United States. There's close to 45,000 Southern Baptist churches in America. He served there twice. He served uh, at the, national, uh, the president of the National Day of Prayer in, uh, in America. Every year we have a day that's devoted to prayer that's by law. And it's more than just a day uh, with the prayer movements that go on, and, and Pastor Ronnie Floyd has served in that capacity. He, in addition to that, served as what's called the president of the executive committee in the Southern Baptist Convention. That's, that's the team, that's the leaders that make the entire 
machinery grow and go. And he served in that capacity. He's been involved in missions all over the world. And, and we're just privileged to have had Rowney, uh, Dr. Floyd, here for the Finnish Asia uh, Summit. And he's going to be bringing God's Word tonight. Now, I just want to just tell you up front, you better, you better buckle your seatbelt. Uh, he is a tremendous preacher. He's come with a message from God for this defining moment in this service tonight. This is a defining moment tonight in Christendom. Would you help me welcome Dr. Ronnie Floyd as he comes tonight? Amen, brother. Ronnie. Thanks, James. Thank you, Dr. Davis. What a joy it is to be with you here. And thank you again for the incredible invitation to Pastor David. I want to say to you, this church is amazing. So tonight, I bring to you what I have been assigned to do, but also convicted to do. I want to preach tonight on the grandest call of all. The grandest call of all. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And we know that in the King James it says, for by faith, uh, by the by faith comes hearing and hearing by the word of God. We humble ourselves, Father. And we ask tonight for the power of the Holy Spirit to come all over this place. I pray tonight that my preaching would not be with excellency of speech or of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power, so that people's faith would never be in me, but it would be in the power of God. I pray that you will bathe this place. I pray that you will absolutely let the presence of God be like an ocean in this room. And I pray that conviction would come and that we would respond to God, respond to God, respond to God in obedience. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Don't hold back. I won't hurt you, I promise. This is all good. But God is issuing some. They have no idea why, but they believe God's calling them. Never been called before like this. But I just want you to stand if that's what you'll start doing. You're going to go up on this thing, man. You're going to start doing it. You, you, God's put it on your heart tonight, and you're going to start issuing that call. Just stand to your feet as a pastor, a missionary. And it's our privilege to hear from Tim this afternoon. Would you please help me welcome Tim as he comes? I love you, Tim. Thank you for making this trip. It means a lot. You want this mic? Thank you, Dr. Davis. Appreciate that. Brothers and sisters, it's a great opportunity to be here with you this afternoon. I am so excited about what God is doing in the world of raising up his church and bringing Bible translation to it. Enable collaboration with a rapidly growing global church and expanding global mission force. That's what Brother James is trying to do. Connect us with one another so that we are connected globally. We may be in the Philippines. You may be in Mindanao. You may be in, Nepal, uh, in, in uh, Myanmar or wherever, but we can be globally connected and there will be some resources that will be provided we can learn from one another. And by the way, resources is not only money. Resources is also manpower, as well as talents and abilities that God is able to provide. We just need to trust in Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Money is not evil, as I said. It's the love of money. The good stewardship of money is a vital resource, as a vital resource is important and its impact on kingdom expansion. First of all, uh, the Tongda Bible. Yeah. 
Yes. How many people? Let me see. Show of hands. How many people are going to download the Tongue Doc app? It's good. It's great. Now, and I have that app. I do I too. I use it. I right? use it. Because what it does, here's what it does. It gives you the opportunity to understand the Bible in a chronological order. That's what Dr. Zoe has done. Now, if you don't have it, download it. Go online and download that app. But in addition, you get all of his notes. Right, yeah. Okay, and, and, okay. And you that's see, where the value is, his entire life's work. Right, right. right. And, yeah. and he has on these scriptures, I notice when I go into it, yeah, he puts up his observations. Yes, he does. So you read the scripture, and I get his observations, and he places all his observations up there, and, and I use it as great devotional so for my own self, as I read it, to encourage myself. I encourage you. It is a great resource. Download it. All right, scroll down a little bit and click on Dr. Biongo Zo. Okay, Dr. Biongo Zo um, did a course for us, The Bible as Story. It may take a second for that to load there, Kevin, but okay, it's coming up. Thank you. And thank you. He did this course for us earlier this year. Now, let me tell you about Beyond Goes Zone. He's going to be teaching this afternoon. I want to ask you a question. How many times have you read the Bible through? You may say, well, I don't, I don't know exactly how many times. Beyond Goes Zone has read the Bible through more than 1,000 times. Now, I have a feeling Dr. Beyond Goes Zone understands the Bible. I mean, just maybe. Is that, is that a fair analysis? So we asked him to teach seven lessons on the Bible as story from novice all the way to mentor. And so in his course, he has outlined all this for us. Go and click on transcript, if you would. And, he, and we only have English because it's a brand new course. And, and so this is going to load for us. Now, this transcript is longer because this is seven hours. He gave us an hour of his best in each of the seven levels. An instrument to exalt to accept Jesus' name globally. Reach your glory, yes, God. Globally, reach your glory. Globally, through the sound. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe.